Let's see what we can determine by trying to graph this particular quadratic expression. Again, notice that we have it in that secondary form, and then when we do, we're able to find some key insights here. So first we look for its vertex, and its vertex was the point H and K. So can we identify those two points based on this graph? Well, in order to identify the H, we need to do one thing a little careful here. This is really an x minus a minus 3 squared. When we put it in that form, then we have it in the form that we need to have where it's x minus h. So h is now a negative 3 and k is a 1. So we're able to find its vertex. Um, what do you notice about does it open upwards or downwards? What's the value of a? Well, there is no a here. a represents the coefficient in front of the squared term. It's not there, so it's a 1, and 1's positive, so we know that a is positive, so our graph opens upwards. Next thing we want to find out is what happens when f of x equals 0. That helps us determine where its x-intercepts are at. So let's solve this equation. x plus 3 squared plus 1 equals zero. Take the square root of both sides. I have x plus three uh, equals plus or minus the square root of negative one. And then x equals minus three plus or minus the square root of negative one. That tells me that I have complex roots. And actually, if you want to add those complex roots, we can rewrite it as um, minus three plus or minus i. I have complex roots. That tells me it doesn't cross the x-axis, so there are no x-intercepts, and that's important for us to know. And then lastly, we want to find out what happens when we evaluate this function at zero. When we do that, that helps us determine where it crosses the y-axis at. So to do that, we're going to set all the x's to zero, so it becomes zero plus three, squared plus a 1, 9 plus a 1 equals a 10. And now we have enough points to make a decent plot. So let's look at our boundaries here. Uh, I have a vertex at negative 3 and 1, so let's just go ahead and draw a little bit bigger this time. Eleven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let's see if that kind of gives us enough of a scale to get a sense of what we need to do here. Uh, its vertex, we discover, is at the point oh, negative 3 and 1. So it looks like we got to go backwards, folks. 1, 2, 3. How about that? So its vertex is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 1. It opens upwards. We discovered here that it does not cross the x-axis, which makes sense. If my vertex is above the x-axis and the graph opens upwards, yeah, there's no way it could cross the x-axis. So I'm familiar with that. And it looks like at the, at the y-axis, it crosses at 10. Right about there. So those are the two points I have. Um, if you remembered earlier that this graph is symmetrical, so it's symmetrical about this axis right here. So that just helps me get an idea of how to kind of keep it a little bit smooth. So I don't have another point roughly about there. And then what we're gonna do is we'll try to give a nice little bit of a curve, nice and smooth. Try to be a little smoother than I am, but that gives us the rough idea of what that particular quadratic functions graph is. The key points we have is its vertex, and here where it crosses the y-axis, that's at f equals zero, is how we're able to find that point. And then we notice that it doesn't cross the x-axis anywhere, and that's helpful for us as well. So that's how we can graph that particular uh, expression that has, in this case, complex roots or complex solutions.